Hi there, everyone. Welcome back to 3 News Now. Today is Wednesday, June 9th. I'm Stephanie Haney. Thanks for joining me here for the top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Today, we start off with a surprising story out of the Cleveland Browns camp. Cleveland Browns Chief of Staff Callie Bronson is seen on dash cam video obtained by 3 News today being pulled over for an OVI charge or operating a vehicle while intoxicated. You can see her in the video letting the officer know that she's concerned because of her position as a coach for the Cleveland Browns. She says she's concerned because it would be detrimental to her career on the video. The officer says, yes, I understand that you are concerned about your job. I'm also concerned about my job. At one point, she tells the officer that she'll be fired if they go through with this field sobriety test and a charge for an OVI. The officer says, I understand that your job is important to you, my job is important to me. And at one point she also tells the officer, my home is right there, apparently close to her home. This was a traffic stop in Brunswick shortly around 1 a.m. on May 27th. It was shortly before 1 a.m., excuse me, on May 27th. And the officer says it doesn't matter how close you are to your home, I have a job to do here and I'm concerned about your driving. She says, I can walk home and he says, I still have a job to do. Now today, during media availability, Cleveland Browns head coach Kevin Stefanski confirmed that Callie Brownson will not be fired. She is currently suspended. There will be disciplinary actions, but she will not be fired from her role as the Cleveland Browns chief of staff due to the OVI charge. The Cleveland Browns issued the following statement on Tuesday. She, they said, we are aware of the incident and are extremely disappointed that a member of our organization put themselves in this situation. We take this matter very seriously and will take the appropriate disciplinary actions. Brownson pleaded no contest to the charge yesterday on Tuesday. According to the incident report, she had a breath test result of 0.215, which is more than twice the legal limit here in Ohio of 0.08. She was given a $700 fine, and she will likely have to take part in a driver intervention program. Bronson became the first female position coach in NFL history when she filled in for the Cleveland Browns as tight end coach during the Week 12 victory over the Jacksonville Jaguars. No word yet on when she'll return to her coaching responsibilities again, currently suspended but will not be fired as a result of this charge. In Cedar Point, we now know that the number of applications has returned to pre-pandemic levels after Cedar Point increased the pay to $20 an hour. Now, when Cedar Point opened for the 2021 season last month, there were a lot of people complaining on social media about waits at the park due to limited staffing. Now, Cedar Point's spokesperson Tony Clark said, yes, like businesses in our area in Ohio and across the country, Cedar Point is not immune to hiring challenges, but... They did increase the wages, a 100% increase from the wages in 2020 to $20 an hour, and it seems that that pay boost is working. Clark told 3 News today that they've had a great response and they've seen applications return to those pre-pandemic levels. He says there's now a process of hiring and training associates, and they remain committed to giving a quality experience to guests. Now, when the park realized it had this staffing shortage, it had already made the decision to be closed every Tuesday and Wednesday through June 23rd. That will stay the same at this point. Clark told 3 News that if that does change, the park will make an announcement on social media. Here's another change that we're seeing because of higher wages at certain places. Chipotle is raising its menu prices just a little bit. It raised its menu prices by between 3.5% and 4%. That's to cover a raise in its wages to an average of $15 per hour. Right now, the starting wage at a Chipotle, depending on your position, is between $11 and $18 an hour. The average hourly starting wage at $15. The Chipotle chief financial officer, John Hartdung, said yes, it was a 4% price increase that would cover the amount of the extra labor that they don't like to increase the prices, but the investment made sense in this situation. I don't know about you, but I'm willing to pay 4% more for my guacamole so that people can earn a living wage. The company said that crew members who reach the position of restaurateur, that's the highest general manager position with Chipotle, can actually get an average compensation of $100,000 a year. Not a bad salary. 
Now, Chipotle said it's looking to hire 20,000 new people across the U.S., and it's offering a $200 employee referral bonus, that's for crew members, and a $750 referral bonus for apprentices or general managers. Now, Chipotle is just one company that's raising those wages to be more competitive, to try and get workers back after a year of people realizing that they weren't making very much money in their day-to-day -day jobs that they no longer could do because of the pandemic. McDonald's, Sheets, and Chipotle, just some of those companies, Amazon, Walmart, and Costco also raising those wages to $15 or higher in some cases. Now let's take a look at the COVID-19 cases here in Ohio, in the US, and around the world. These first numbers come from Johns Hopkins University. Globally, there have been a total of 174,125,069 reported COVID-19 cases. In the US, we have 19.2% of those reported cases with 33,397,397. Globally, there have been 3,750,197 reported COVID-19 deaths, and we've had 16% of those here in the US with 598,503. Here in Ohio, the Ohio Department of Health reports there have been 391 new reported cases of COVID-19 in the last day, and we've seen 77 new hospitalizations in the last day. That number is up from yesterday. 471 people currently in the hospital being treated for COVID-19. That number is down from yesterday. And 147 of those people in the ICU right now, that number also down from yesterday with seven new ICU admissions in the last day. Taking a look at the vaccination picture, more than 41% of Ohioans are completely vaccinated against COVID-19. That's more than 4.8 million people and close to 22,000 people completely vaccinated in the last 24 hours. That's either the single Johnson & Johnson shot or a second dose of Pfizer or the Moderna vaccine. More than 46% of Ohioans have started the vaccination process. That's more than 5.4 million people and almost 13,000 started in the last day. So if you add those two numbers together, 87% of Ohioans have at least started the vaccination process and over 10 million people have at least started the vaccination process here in Ohio. Remember tonight is the third Ohio vaccine million drawing. So one Ohioan 18 and up who has had at least one COVID-19 vaccine shot will win a million dollars before taxes and one Ohioan between the ages of 12 and 17 who has had at least one COVID-19 vaccination shot will win up to a four-year college scholarship that includes room, board, tuition, and books, the whole shebang. That drawing will be at 7.29 p.m. tonight. You can watch that live on Channel 3, also on our WKYC app, WKYC.com, our Facebook, and our YouTube pages. Now, speaking of things that have been happening in the pandemic, something that we've seen is more and more women freezing their eggs. So I'm in the middle of a multi-part, multi-platform series about the rise in egg freezing during the pandemic, what that's like for people, and some of the obstacles that stand in the way, and some of the challenges that present themselves, and things you need to think about when it comes to that. The first topic we talk about is kind of the prep work that involves in deciding to freeze your eggs and some of that fertility testing and we've many of us have seen if you are a female in your 20s and your 30s it's possible that you have seen those Instagram ads claiming that they can sort of tell you how much time you have to think about starting a family naturally well I talked with one doctor from the Cleveland Clinic the IVF director Dr. Marjan Adiron and she says that those tests might not be all that they're cracked up to be especially if you're on birth control because that can impact what those test results might be, and it might cause you more stress than it's worth. So for more on that, head to WKYC.com. You can also listen to those in-depth conversations on the Three Things to Know with Stephanie Haney podcast. That's linked at WKYC.com slash Three Things to Know. You can also find it on my Twitter and on my Instagram page, underscore Stephanie Haney. And if you want to find it and you're having a hard time finding it, shoot me a DM. I'll send you a direct link. Now, if you are an America's Got Talent fan, you will know that the audition phase is happening right now, and a Zanesville, Ohio singer known as Nightbird got the golden buzzer in an emotional audition. It's 30-year-old Jane Markzewski, and she got a standing ovation for her original song performed after telling the judges that she'd been battling cancer. So that golden buzzer was sent just straight through the audition process, came from Simon Cowell, and it was after she sang her song, It's Okay, which is about the story of the last year of her life. She said the last time that she checked, she had cancer in her lungs. 
her spine and her liver, but she refuses to let that define her. She says it's important to her that everyone knows that she's more than the bad things that happened to her. It brought all four of the judges to their feet, and Simon Cowell called her voice absolutely stunning. You can watch that full edition on WKYC.com. Now, if you're a golfer, you'll be happy to know that two Cleveland Metro Parks golf courses have been named the top 30 nationwide by Golf Magazine. Now, this is the first time Golf Magazine has ever ranked public golf courses. This is their 30 best municipal golf courses. Sleepy Hollow in Brecksville was ranked number 13, and the Manakiki Golf Course in Willoughby was ranked number 27. Cleveland Metro Park CEO Brad Zimmerman said the music, music, municipal mouthful golf courses are often the most affordable and accessible in the country, and that at the Cleveland Metro Parks, they really strive to offer high-quality opportunities for golfers of all ages and skill levels. There are eight Cleveland Metro Parks golf courses across Northeast Ohio. They offer golf lessons for everyone, golf camps, leagues, and tournaments. And you can learn more about that linked at WKYC.com. And if you love tacos, you'll be happy to know that the Cleveland Taco and Tequila Fest, the first ever, is coming to the Agora in August. It'll be August 27th through the 29th. Three days of tacos, tequila, live music. There'll be taco trucks, all kinds of Mexican beer, artisan vendors. There'll be 30 varieties of tequila there. And there will be local performances, local bands, contests, all kinds of entertainment. The tickets are on sale now. It's at tacofestcle.com. That's linked to wkyc.com. It's $5 for a day or $10 for the weekend. Children 12 and under are free. We've got the hours and all the details on wkyc.com. It's open till 11 p.m. Friday and Saturday. Close the shop at 8 o'clock on Sunday. And an up Bait date from the zoo beat. The Cleveland Metro Park Zoo has a name for the new baby orangutan, and the name is Zaki, meaning pure. This was chosen by people who made donations to help the conservation for future orangutan conservation efforts, and it was $15,000, close to $15,000 that people donated. The Cleveland Metro Park Zoo says thank you very much, and you can visit Zaki at the zoo right now. That's it for your three news now update today for Wednesday, June 9th. I'll see you next up on what's new with your trending stories in clicking in Cleveland, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for more three news now.